Weapons are best for Segu? Well, I mean, you're using a scythe, but I'm sure you know that already. Um, for a higher level, I mean, if you're, I mean, I don't know what your price range is, but the, you know, the first one that isn't super expensive that's pretty good is getting your 150 plus 10 weapon, and then after that you have like your ultimate or twisted fate 175 plus 10 weapon, or you have your 175 uh, lunacy weapon. So any of those are pretty good. Um, if you're trying to go higher than that, uh, then there's a gold dragon uh, seg, seg ripper weapon, uh, which is really good or you could get a heffron or helion would be the you know the the very top is is helion right now so those are kind of your options by the way moser do you have any tips for a more efficient way of making cash in game like dgs and um stuff to farm like that yes i do have some suggestions for that give me just give me one second here i'm i'm relogging really quick because my uh, uh there we go my I went into the dungeon too early, and I didn't want to wait a whole minute. So, oh, and uh, do I have any stream times? Right now, I don't have any specific stream times. I think I'm going to be shooting for around this time uh, weekdays, because this is the only time that I, I have the apartment to myself and I can do that. Uh, but going... Going forward, I'm not sure. It's still something I have to figure out. I have a, I have a fairly busy schedule. So that's kind of hard for me to know. Oh, hold on. I got to put my guy in a party. Give me a second here, guys. Uh, so I don't have a great answer to that, but I'm hoping to get something a little more, you know, figured out in the future. Uh, but we'll have to see how that goes. Okay. Now, any tips for efficient way to making cash in game? Like what do you use to farm? Well, the one you're seeing me farm right now is actually a pretty good way to do it. If, if you're able to farm this dungeon and exchange your skill books for Nire Scrolls, if you get... Uh, like 500 Nire Scrolls. I'm not sure how long that would take to farm, but if you sold those, those would sell for, I believe, 135% grace, which is the equivalent of uh, 40 bill. So that's a good way. Nire, Nire Scrolls are definitely a good way. I mean, everyone's looking to upgrade their Meisters, so it's, you know, that's a good way to farm some money in game. Uh, farming the supplies that people need to upgrade their Matiras and stuff like that is a good way to make money. Uh, uh, these ones specifically, what are they called? Materials and Sanity Fragments. You'll have to see what they sell for in the uh, shop, but or in the agency, but those sell for a good amount. Uh, also, the Materials Anger Fragments and the Materials Ghost Fragments are sell for a decent amount as well, so you can farm those in the field. Uh, R-Gates are another thing that is used very, very commonly by a lot of players, and if you farm Sacred Claw, you get a lot of R-Gates farming that dungeon. So... Farming that gets you R gates, and you can look at the R gate prices. But I know that the R gate prices are pretty high, so that's a that's a good way to make cash in game. Uh, right now, Helian weapon supplies, and I think I have one piece right now, uh, like the Heavenly Energy or the I think, I think it's Adamantium. Uh, that's pretty high in demand right now because people are crafting Helian weapons, and these can be farmed in the new level 190 map in Shangri La. And these sell for a decent amount, too. I, th I think just a couple of these is worth 135% or 40 bills. So that's that's pretty crazy. Uh, for, like, you know, like, short-term or, 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 like, making money over time, I kind of like to do, like, uh, uh, the uh, solo dungeons. And the solo dungeons uh, drop gear, you know, from plus, you know, pl plus 7 or plus 8. Uh, and that's... Those sell for a decent amount. I'd say they sell anywhere from 100 mil to like 5 bill, depending on the item drop you get. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, and then, what easiest way to get strong rings? Uh, well, are you looking for rings for PvP, or are you looking for rings for PvE? So, like, are you fighting other players? Uh, you need a camouflage to gain the dungeon I'm doing right now. Right. Nope. That is that is not correct. This is this dungeon, it just requires a little bit of dill to enter. So you can run this dungeon as many times as you want, and it doesn't really cost you anything. Not not for PvP. Oh, I wasn't paying attention, dang it. Uh, uh, not for not for PvP. Okay, so you're looking for PvE rings. So I will show you some PvE rings that I would recommend and how you can get them. So uh, for PvE rings, uh, your main one is definitely going to be your Perpetus, and that is an extremely important accessory, very strong. 
Um, oh, you're level 157. Okay, well, you're not going to be going for your purpose just yet then. You are, however, going to be going for a Squama. Uh, oh, no, that's 170. I thought it was 150. Okay, well, you need to get those at some point. Uh, at your level, the best things are actually probably these rings uh, that you get from the Norak Cave Dungeon because they give a bunch of, like, movement speed, attack, and stuff like that. Um, also, you can get your Deca Line Ring from Karen in our Deca, and that Deca Line Ring can be upgraded using Seed of Dreams. Um, and that, that gives some good monster damage tolerance. Also, when we get into our holiday events, like uh, Halloween, like the Spooklet, or uh, the Novus Ring, which I have somewhere, um, those are also good for, for PvE. As you can see, they give uh, monster damage tolerance. So those are good. Um, definitely get a little bit of a higher level, though, so you can get your Squama. Like, your, your, your main uh, PvE accessory starting off is definitely going to be your Squama because it gives you 12% monster damage tolerance, which is super helpful. Uh, but the Norak Cave uh, rings I recommend highly. Um, they, they drop pretty often, or you can buy them in the agency. And after you get them, you can use Cardia, which is located... I have some in my inventory here. Uh, right here, and then you can use that to actually upgrade that ring to some of the better ones. And you can have three of them stacked on your character. Let me, let me show you what that looks like here. I know they're in here somewhere. I believe it's the... Um, I have to find it. I know it's in here somewhere. Uh, it might be under etc. Etc. No. Exchange ingredients. I don't know where it is, but you upgrade it in here. I can't remember exactly where it is. Uh, oh, here. Unique accessories. So... Here's the level 71 ring, and then you upgrade it to the level 115 ring, and then to the 140 ring, and then to the 160 ring. And you can actually have all of those, all of those equipped. Um, and as you can see, you get like 45% movement speed from that, a bunch of attack, and a bunch of defense. So that's definitely what I would recommend to start off with. Uh, just do the Norak Cave Dungeon to get your first one, and you also get Cardia from the bosses, um, and then you can upgrade that. That's definitely a good place to start. And I, and I do actually have a guide on my channel for how to do the Norak Dungeon if you're confused by it. So you can check that out. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, solid caught the stream. What's good, man? Uh, just just farming some skill books. That's what I need to do right now. I'm, I'm trying to get enough Nair skill scrolls so that I can max out my other tree on my wizard and make a guide on it. So that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, where can I get... Uh, the Arcadia? What do you mean by the Arcadia? Do you mean the map or do you mean the Cardia? Um, but can you stack three level 60s or... No, you cannot stack three level 60s. You can only stack one of each level type. But even at 160, if you have all three of those rings on, it's it's pretty strong. Um, yeah, Cardia. Cardia you get from killing bosses in like solo dungeons and stuff like that. I, I know that the Norak uh, boss actually does have a chance to drop Cardia... Uh, but in general, he, it, it just drops from bosses. So do like your daily dungeons and stuff, and you'll get Cardia pretty quick. It might even be tradable, honestly. Yeah, it's tradable. Hey, if if uh, you know Digger, if you want, I could even give you like a hundred Cardia or something, just so that you can you know get your stuff upgraded. Okay, so I uh, got a fairly complex question for you. Uh, I got a seg. I recently farmed with 168, but I'm also new to a lot of this game, and I haven't really played since 8.6. Any suggestions on accessories, etc.? Should I focus on... Also, is there any wings or farmable costumes in-game? Okay, that is kind of a complex question. Let me let me come back to that, and let me answer some of... Like, a uh, uh, couple of these quick. Uh, so you were speaking of farming low-level dungeons. How do you obtain camos? Uh, so uh, camouflages are obtained in the D-Shop, or... There is, if you do the daily um, dungeon uh, at tower, you get one free camouflage a day for doing that dungeon. Uh, but to be honest with you, with the solo dungeons, I, I only do them once a day. I just do the one free one a day, and I still get pretty good drops from doing it. So I don't really feel like you need the camouflages, but they definitely help. Uh, is Karen's Fang worth upgrading? I mean, I have a Karen's Fang, and I'll be honest with you, I haven't gone beyond that just because I feel like it's hard to upgrade and the insanities are kind of expensive. So if you're doing PvP, I mean, it's a must-have item, so it's definitely worth upgrading. If you don't do PvP, I don't think you really need to bother with it. Okay, back to IDK, what's name? Uh, let me ans answer your questions. So... For your accessories, as soon as you get to 170, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to farm your Squama in the 160 solo dungeon. That's going to be one of your main accessories. 
Um, and then I would also recommend doing this dungeon and farming your Lacrima, because that'll give you more attack. Um, you cannot have your Squama and your Lacrima equipped at the same time, but uh, you, you can do like a switch. So like if you're tanking, you can have your Squama on, or if you're not tanking, you can have your Lacrima on for extra damage, and I would definitely recommend that. Um, the Matira's tier is really good if you're just doing PvE, and I would recommend not upgrading it to the Fang at that point. I don't have one on this account, but uh, it, it gives you 20% critical damage, which at a lower level is going to make a pretty big you know, difference to your, uh, to, to your damage. And then if you weren't in here earlier, I talked about how I like these, uh, these rings you get from the Norak dungeon. Uh, they give you some good stats as well. Um, once you get to higher levels, like if you get to like 185, for example, the Sailor Ring is uh, very good. As you can see here, it's giving me 11% magic attack, which is which is pretty nice. Um, so that's what, what, what you should do for some accessories. Um, for wings and costumes, uh, yes, there are wings and costumes you can farm. I would recommend doing a Horror Honeymoon, which is going to be kind of hard for you right now at 168. Uh, but... <clears throat> if you can get someone to do it with you, that would probably be the best thing. Or if you can get your monster damage tolerance high enough to the point where you can survive it and do it on your own, that would be good. Because uh, you can get the polar bear costume, which is pretty good. And I'll show that to you in a second here. So that's this one. Um, but see, it's 12% monster damage tolerance, which is nice. Attack, vitality, it's, it's good and it's totally free. Uh, the liberated ice dragon wings you can also get from that dungeon and those are also pretty good when you're first starting out although i'd probably recommend just trying to save up money and buy buy like a pair of like gold mechanic wings or something from another player because those are those are going to be your best in slots uh my seg is plus nine is most plus nine does that help oh definitely i mean the better gear you have the better um you know, it's just going to give you more defense, more attack, all that good stuff. The uh, the gold mechanic wings are what I have currently. I think they're fairly expensive. Uh, I mean, I'm thinking over 200 bill probably. Um, so those are kind of hard to get right now. But those are definitely best in slot for, for at least for other wings you can go for. I wish I was at my stash because I could show you some of the other ones I have. I, I don't have them on me right now, but... The, the Liberated Ice Dragon Wings are a good place to start. Um, or the Wedding Rings from, from Normal Honeymoon are also okay for when you're first starting off. They're at least better than the Generic Wings. Yeah. I mean, you, you might be able to get, for like closer to 100 bill, you could probably get like uh, Mechanic Wings, which are, which are pretty decent. I mean, you just got to see what people are selling in chat, and you might be able to get something that's a little better than what you have for not like a... Yeah, horror, horror Honeymoon is good for your costume and for your wings, for sure, when you're starting off. <clears throat> also, you, you, you can get stuff, I mean, you can get like 9% gems and stuff, which sell for a decent amount, which might make you a little bit of money as well. Uh, uh, best free-to-play wings to get. Free-to-play wings. So, actually, a lot of the wings and wing boxes in-game are tradable. Uh, so you just need to farm enough money to be able to buy them. I mean, technically, this is a free-to-play wing. Yes, you get it from a platinum box but you can buy the boxes from other players. So there is that same thing with like your Flag of War or your um, uh, Arcadia Wings or your Mechanic Wings or your Wing of Dreams. Any of those are good and you can buy them in game from other players. If you want to farm your own wings, the only ones you can really farm are the ones in uh, Honeymoon and Horror Honeymoon. And yes, those wings are... Or Actually, I could show those to you guys really quick now because I need to run to my stash anyway because um, I need to exchange all these to, to Nyer Scrolls. So let's uh, take a look. I can show you some of the other wings you can get. Wings in here. Or at least I thought I had some wings in here. Maybe I got rid of them. Here we go. Uh, Icy Dragon Wings. These are the ones that you get from a Horror Honeymoon Dungeon. So you can see that they're pretty good. I mean, the All Res is fairly useful in PvE. Uh, but it's like movement speed, HP, critical rate, stuff like that. Uh, and those are free. You can farm them there. There's also the Angelic Wings, which drop in normal Honeymoon. And you can see here that they give max HP, critical rate... Uh, critical resistance. These used to be more PV, PvP rings back before all these other wings came out, but uh, yeah. The Icy Dragon Wings, since the critical rate's a little bit higher, are probably a little bit better for uh, that. Uh, how do you get into Horror Honeymoon? Sure, I can explain that one to you too. Uh, I think
think I have some of these boxes here. Give me a second. I, I, I have so much junk in my stash, guys, just from over time and, like, events and stuff. I'm kind of a hoarder. Uh, let me... I should have a horror honeymoon box somewhere. At least I thought I did. Oh, here, here's one. Okay, so I can explain this to you. So if you want to do horror honeymoon... Uh, no, no, no. Questions are the best. I love questions. Uh, it give, gives me something to talk about. It's way better than me just, like, farming these books and, like, not talking to anyone that's watching. So you, you can go to uh, the High Priestess here. And you take your wedding preparation quest. And then after completing that quest, all you have to do is farm 20 uh, wedding things. They're like these little circle things. You, you just farm them anywhere in game. They And they drop. Uh, and then you get this wedding box for two hours. And you exchange that and you get your wedding ticket box. With that ticket, you come back here and you can either go into the normal honeymoon dungeon or the horror honeymoon dungeon which apparently is now called halloween fortune dungeon i don't know why but uh that's how you do that uh rough diamonds yeah that's what they're called uh okay bombarding with questions rough diamonds yeah rough diamonds is a smart it's smart to get the quest before dead front law well, yes yes it is they they drop like everywhere um, and then you can do this quest once a day so for free you can do one one of these quests a day um, you can get, there are actually two other ways that you can get tickets. Um, one way you, uh, no, it, no, it, I think it's always been this way. Uh, but you could buy it in the D shop or you could do this quest. But there is actually one other way that you can get the tickets and it's with Seed of Dreams and you can get it at NPC Jack. Uh, so what you do is you go to Jack, you go to New, and then you go to Dungeon Tickets. And then here you can also get Honeymoon Tickets as well. Um... Dailies give tickets as well. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. So, so that's how you get tickets for that. Um, but like I said, for making money, guys, like earlier, uh, what I was doing is I'm getting these... Uh, I mean, you, you can just sell the skill books individually, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to disassemble these because I need Nair Scrolls. So I'm going to disassemble Dark Wide, that, 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 and that. Um, and... Uh, well, what these disassemble for is these disassemble for Nair Scrolls. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble these. And as you can see here, I got uh, 45 Nair Scrolls, which is actually pretty lame. I was hoping to get more than that. But uh, those Nair Scrolls are used for getting your step skill books. And if you get like 500 of these, or, you know, you can sell any amount. But I think they sell for almost 100 mil, 100 mil each. Let's go take a look here. Because uh, I don't think a lot of people are farming them. So I feel like for that reason, they're worth a decent amount. Uh, but if you go here and you go to other and then we type in GN, you can see some people are selling Nair Scrolls for. So the minimum amount that these Nair Scrolls are selling for is uh, 70 mil each. So just j just for fun here, I just spent an hour farming that dungeon. And if I was paying attention, I could have got more. But you do 45 times your 70 mil, and that's 3.1 bill that I just farmed in an hour. So, like, that's, that's like, a pretty easy way to make money. Um, people complain a lot that it's really hard to make money in this game, and in some ways they're right. But I think it's more just knowing and actually putting in the time to fire, or I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> the time to farm. A lot of people get really disheartened because they see people spending a bunch of money and then they get way ahead of them because they're spending that money. And I totally understand that, but it's definitely possible to farm things in game and make money. It just, it just takes work. And it's disheartening when you see players who are spending money doing that faster than you, which I think puts off a lot of people. Um, you know, you say you need a ton of damage. I'm going to be honest with you. It, they made that dungeon significantly easier um, and you actually don't need that much damage to solo it. Uh, but uh, the other thing you could do is you could do it with, like, a friend or something, right? And with that friend, you could, you know, like, split the drops, right? So split the scrolls at the end, and you could split the profits. Even then, you're still getting, like, 1.5 bill an hour, which I don't think is too bad. Um, at least with the current market. So, uh, but yes, working on your damage is going to be one of the first things you're going to do. And that's going to be... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, but so the dragons, um, those won't hit anyone. It, it, it doesn't matter how strong you are. You just have to avoid them. 
So like when they're when they're like attacking you, you just need to avoid them. If you kill the statue before they be, be before they spawn, you don't have to worry about them. Um, otherwise, you can actually run away from them, or you can use a skill on them. And when you use a skill on them, they immediately explode. Uh, once again, I do have a guide for that dungeon up on my channel. It's called 160 uh, Elenome Party Dungeon, and you you can check that out if you need more information. Um, I think when I made that guide too, the dungeon was actually harder than it is now because they did make it easier. Uh, but that's a good dungeon. Also, like I said, just farming in the field, getting here. Let, let me show you this: getting these uh, materia insanity fragments, or uh, ghost fragments, or anger fragments are actually a decent way to decent way to make money as well. Uh, once again, we can go here. We can go to other. And we can search, well, let's search the insanity ones for fun. So insanity fragments, you can see these are selling for a minimum of 166 mil each. And you can get a couple of those an hour, which is pretty good. Uh, or we can look at the uh, ghost fragments. And these are selling for not as much, but still 27 mil each. Or we can look at the anger fragments. And these are selling for even less, but they but but you get them faster. And but you get all three of these at the same time while you're farming in the field. So those are pretty decent too. And like I said, like doing your Python solo dungeon is a really good way to go because you can get like a one like a one thirty plus eight weapon drop possibly, and that can easily sell for three to four bill. So you know that's just about luck, but it's good as well. Or if you do your uh, your one forty five solo dungeon and or sorry 130 solo dungeon in space of pilgrimage um you can get you can even get like a ilias pet egg drop which is worth like 10 bill uh please do more live streams i i'm gonna try to do them more in the future hopefully we can get more people to watch them uh but i i do appreciate you guys here uh by the way thanks for the guide on how to get the fire chicken <laughs> the, I, I like how you call it a fire chicken that's awesome uh yes that mount is super useful uh to get um